CMA has ruled that the dismissal of an employee for refusing to be vaccinated against COVID-19 was indeed fair. The worker refused to take the shot, claiming it was against her human rights. To help us understand this ruling then and what it means possibly for the way forward in the conversation in South Africa about vaccine mandates, we're joined tonight by Cliff decker Hofmeyer, Employment Law Director, Hedda Schnessema, and Natasha Moni from Moni Attorneys Incorporated. She's directed there. Um, I thanks to you both. Thank you so much for being on the program. Natasha, if I can begin with you. So in this um, outcome from the CCMA, the employee was dismissed for refusing to participate in the creation of a safe working environment. Have the CCMA and the employer made the right call? I believe it has. And it, it, the, the case may not have explained it um, as eloquently as we all would want the case to explain it. But in terms of the regulations um, that came out on the 11th of June 2021, uh, a vaccination is um, mandatory and it's up to, well, they made it in the employer's discretion to make a vaccination mandatory, provided that they do risk assessments, that they identify the employees, that they counsel those employees, and without being able to accommodate the employees, then turn to some form of incapacity mm. route um, and dismiss them. And that is exactly what happened in this matter. Let's talk about just the, the issue of incapacity, which was ultimately the grounds on which this person was dismissed. What is the scope legally? How much ground is there for employers to move around as far as reaching such a decision? So incapacity is not as, the, the, as we know it. This is incapacity in terms of COVID-19. You are incapable of doing your work when um, during this, this period without being vaccinated. That's what it means. You're not able to do your work and the employer is not able to make um, some form of concession. In other words, to allow you to work from home or um, to separate you from the group of people that you need to be with. Um, Hedda, this employee involved in this matter then lost her bid for reinstatement at the CCMA because she interacts basically with a lot of uh, colleagues, not a lot, but she interacts with employees in confined spaces and uncontrolled environment. Are we finally heading to the route where the issue of vaccine mandates will basically be decided by our occupation and the level of interaction with others physically? Temekile, at this stage, it would seem that way. We must just remember that this award is not precedent. So we're not sure where our courts are going to go with this. But as, as Natasha had indicated, in terms of the directive last year, as an employer, you're obligated, obviously, to set out a risk assessment, to, to assess your risk in terms of what your employees are actually doing. So if you take the production environment, for example, it would be in the interest from a, from a risk perspective that if you can demonstrate as the employer why it's necessary, why everyone in your production environment needs to be vaccinated, you would probably be able, from a reasonable test perspective, be able to convince an arbitrator going forward, alternatively, perhaps the court, if they, they are um, uh, meaning to, to follow that type of route as well, mm -hmm. that it would be in the interest from a public safety perspective why it's necessary. And Heather, how important is it that the issue of vaccine mandates ultimately be settled by a court? Because at the end of last year at NEDLAC, there was a lot of conversation about how even the constitutional court may need to give the country direction here. It's extremely important, Timikita, because as I said, awards are not precedent. So we're guided by our courts in this in this regard. So we would have to then hold out to see what our courts ultimately decide. And I have no doubt it will go to the Constitutional Court. And the balance then between, let me come back to you, Natasha, personal rights. I mean, firstly, the employee were told that said that she would not take the vaccine, I believe, on religious grounds. And then it became an issue about the right as an individual to refuse to take a, a treatment. How clear cut are those lines? It's not clear cut, and I think each individual is going to have to be assessed on um, its constitutional, our constitutional imperative. We must always remember that we have a limitation right, um, and we also have other acts that protect employees as a whole, as a collective, like the Occupational Health and Safety Act, and also the Disaster Management Act, um, and and. Um, you cannot exclude them in this kind of environment. Um, COVID-19 will go away 
but um, this is one of the 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 things that we can use in order to uh, try and make the entire working environment safe. Um, and it's not a guarantee, but at least the employer can then say that they've done everything in their power in order to to make sure that the the environment is safe for all its employees. And this particular company I was reading, Natasha, went quite the mile, it would appear, consultation for about three months. Uh, a doctor was made available for consultation, a vaccinologist, even a traditional healer. Is that mm. the, the test that companies would also have to pass in covering their tracks, well, not their tracks essentially, but making sure that they follow due process before announcing a vaccine mandate policy? Well, there are three, there are three phases. Um, the first one is your risk assessment. Your second one is to identify those employees um, who do not want to be vaccinated, counsel them, and perhaps provide alternatives. For instance, the alternative of providing uh, COVID-19 uh, negative tests every week. Um, that was what the employee agreed to. The employee, unfortunately, did not abide by the agreement and so was, was um, not able to get um, into work. Um, and and, and that, is, that is the issue. So then the third phase gets kicked in, um, and that is, well, what are we going to do now? Because our operational requirements um, dictate that we need to have these employees um, within a, a, a safe space um, uh, with one another, and um, they can't guarantee that. Um, and that is where the incapacity kicked in. Hedda, what are the options available, I wonder, to this woman now that she's lost to the CCMA? Is the Labour Court where she needs to go next? That's correct, Yamakilo. So she would have to lodge a review in the Labour Court in terms of Section 145 of the Labour Relations Act. And w there, would the test of the merits of the case be any different from what the CCMA had to deal with, or would she basically have to very much present the same arguments and just hope that the court sees it differently? Tembekile, a review application is done on paper, so ultimately the judge would be presented with the transcript of the arbitration, and he would then have to, or he or she would then have to determine the reasonableness of the outcome of the arbitration award and would have to make a finding in relation to that. In order for the judge to do that, as I said, he would consider the transcript and he would consider the bundle documents in order to determine whether or not that is a decision a reasonable decision maker could have made. Mm. Let me come back to you, uh, Natasha, and talk about more broadly. We're talking a lot in the last few months about companies and workers who choose not to be vaccinated for whatever reason. What about people who've been vaccinated and possibly argue that they feel unsafe going back to an environment where a colleague who sits right next to them or across is not vaccinated. Do they also have legal grounds in which they can take the company on? Look, um, the South African regulations have made it a criminal offence not to wear a mask in public um, and also a criminal offence if um, somebody... Uh, engages with you, like a colleague engages with you, and they are um, they know that they're COVID-19 positive. Um, so under those circumstances, I certainly would say that the colleagues um, who have been vaccinated do have, an, uh, do have a right to complain, but that has to go through the company's grievance procedures um, or to, to uh, uh, complain to your police station um, in terms of trying to open up a case, um, I, I, I would first try the soft approach, and that is to to speak it out, to counsel, to to um, uh, have everyone ex uh, understand why it is you don't want to be vaccinated. Um, perhaps it is a legitimate reason. Perhaps it is not. Um, but to to really work towards finding um, common ground. But if you cannot find common ground, I certainly would follow the grievance process because every employee has a right and every employee has a right to feel safe. Mm. Natasha Heda, good to speak to you both. Thank you so much for your time tonight. That was the Director in the Employment Law Practice at Cliff Decker Hofmeyer, Heda Schnesema, and Director at Moni Attorneys Incorporated, Natasha Moni. Thank you both for your time tonight.